Hi, everybody. It's Monday, October 14th. Happy fall break to those in the Box Elder School District. Happy birthday to Laura. Happy Columbus Day. Happy, uh, happy fall. Today, I want to give you a couple of ideas that hopefully will add to your study of, of 3 Nephi 20 through 26. Last week, we talked about the Savior's visit to the Nephites and focused on the idea from chapter 17 that Jesus promises uh, that his bowels are filled with mercy because of his compassion for us. To know that about Jesus Christ helps us in our relationship with him to know what he's like. We compared that with other scriptures, like from 3 Nephi chapter 9, where the Lord invited the Nephites who had been spared to return unto me and repent of your sins and be converted, so that I may heal you. It's kind of a prescription for spiritual healing to return to Christ, repent of sins, and be converted or changed. It also links us to Alma chapter 7, where Alma prophesied that the Savior would go forth suffering pains, afflictions, and temptations of every kind, and he would take upon him their infirmities, so that his bowels may be filled with mercy according to the flesh. The Savior is our compassionate Lord, and that, that alone ought to quadruple our faith and our desire to be near Him. This week, I want to give you a couple verses to look at and kick off our study. The Savior said to the Nephites, You remember that I spake unto you and said that when the words of Isaiah should be fulfilled, and verily, verily, I say unto you that when they shall be fulfilled, then is the fulfilling of the covenant which the Father hath made to his people, O house of Israel. And then shall the remnants, which shall be scattered abroad on the face of the earth, be gathered in from the east and from the west, and from the south and from the north, and they shall be brought to a knowledge of the Lord their God who hath redeemed them. If we simplify that verse down, this is a promise of the Lord, or the Lord reminding the Nephites of the promise the Father has made to the fathers of Israel, the, the patriarchs and matriarchs, that uh, the remnant who is scattered abroad the face of the earth shall be gathered in. And to be gathered in means they shall be brought to it the knowledge of the Lord their God who hath redeemed them. So what is the remnant? What, what does it mean that the Father will bring this remnant uh, and gather who have been scattered abroad shall be gathered in. Well, it obviously means the Nephites, who were Israelites who had been transplanted into the New World. It means the lost tribes of Israel, which is the obvious answer most people who study Isaiah or even these chapters would think of. It could just be in any time or any space the lost individuals of the house of Israel. And maybe it just means mortal life. Those of us who have been walking on this planet like pilgrims and strangers, lost to who we really are. Sister Snow gave us the poem that oft times a secret something whispers, you're a stranger here. I, I wonder how often we are those the remnant that has been scattered abroad. Anyway, the Savior earlier had told us that now he goes to the Father to show himself to the lost tribes of Israel. For they are not lost unto the Father, for he knoweth whither he hath taken them. Whether the, the lost tribes are the Nephites, who only felt lost because they weren't in Jerusalem, or the tribes of Israel, which we just don't know historically how those tribes felt or where they were, or any person who has ever been part of God's covenant, including ourselves, they are not lost unto the Father, for he knoweth where, whether he hath taken them. So what does it mean to be lost, uh, and where are the lost tribes? Well, in history, in 2 Kings chapter 17, 1 through 5, we know that King Shalamanser V, king of Assyria, swept into northern Israel and carried off the, the house of Israel, or the members of that kingdom, and took them into exile. Mostly, they would have gone to Assyria, the kingdom of Assyria, is centered mostly in what we now know as Mosul, Iraq, in northern Iraq and southern Turkey. And is that where the ten tribes are? Is that where we're waiting to find uh, 
Zaft uh, Naphtaliites and Zebulonites? Well, there are a lot of theories. Maybe they're in Iraq or Turkey or Uzbekistan and places where we just haven't had a strong church impact. There's certainly a lot of people, uh, or some people, who have thought that maybe they, they went into a hollow earth, that the inside of the earth is a place that uh, we just can't explore with a central sun and, and cities of, of advancement, that they will return someday out of the center of the earth. That, of course, uh, seems ludicrous to, to anybody with a scientific mind, but hey, who knows? We've been wrong before on stuff. Maybe they're going to come up out of Kentucky's mammoth cave and the, the hole on the earth that's going to bring them out. Sister Eliza Snow wrote a poem one time that thou, earth, was once a glorious sphere, sphere of noble magnitude and didst with majesty appear among the worlds of God. But thy dimensions have been torn asunder piece by piece and each dismembered fragment borne abroad to distant space. When Enoch could no longer stay amid the corruption here, part of thyself, the earth, was borne away to form another sphere. That portion where his city stood, he gained by right approved, and nearer to the throne of God, his planet upward moved. Sister Snow thought that uh, the city of Enoch was just a hunk of the earth that was pulled off and became its own uh, orbiting planet, closer to the planet of, God, of, of the home of God. And then... And when the Lord saw fit to hide the ten lost tribes away, thou, earth, was severed to provide the orb on which they stay. And thus from time to time thy size has been diminished till thou seems the law of sacrifice created to fulfill. So if Enoch and his city are off in some distant orbit and, and the ten tribes are on orbit, maybe that's why there are UFOs coming back. And, and maybe in the end of days, when the ten tribes and, and the seed of Enoch are restored, the earth will come back to its normal form. And uh, the observation, of course, is that just because someone respected in the church history says something doesn't make it true. This is a, a wonderful theory, and it might be true. Sister Snow certainly said her prayers and was close to the Lord and had as good a right as anybody to theorize where they are. This one does not seem to make sense to me. And I don't know that, uh, that that's what we should hold our breath waiting to expect. The, the key in this is that the Lord says that the identifier of the lost tribes is that they don't have the knowledge of the Lord, their God, who hath redeemed them. That could be anyone. That could be anywhere. That could be everywhere, I guess. If you think about the numbers of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, whether literal or adopted members of the House of Israel, compared with the vast history of the world, even right now where the members of the Church are one-tenth of one percent of the people on this earth, that is very, very few com compared with the majority of this planet who are lost. If we add to that all of the people who have existed since history could be recorded. That number is phenomenal. And then if we add just history that we don't even have good genealogy for, there are certainly on this side and the other side of the veil hundreds of thousands of millions of the children of Israel who have no uh, knowledge of the Lord their Redeemer, their God who hath redeemed them. So where is this remnant? This remnant is everywhere. President Nelson has told us that, my dear young brothers and sisters, these surely are the latter days, and the Lord is hastening his work to gather Israel. That gathering is the most important thing taking place on the earth today. Nothing else compares in magnitude. Nothing else compares in importance. Nothing else compares in majesty. And if you choose to, if you want to, you can be a big part of it. You can be a big part of something big, something grand, something majestic. If we demystify the scattering and gathering of the house of Israel, instead of being on floating orbs or in the center of the earth, and recognize that the house of Israel are right, right with us, we see more opportunities for us to associate with the Lord, who, as Elder Kieran said, 
Uh, the Lord, no one has built a roadblock and stationed someone there to turn around and send you away. In fact, it is exact opposite. God is in relentless pursuit of you, O house of Israel. He wants all of his children to choose to return to him, and he employs every possible measure to bring you back. The Father's design, his plan, his purpose, his intent, his wish, and his hope are that are all to heal you and all to give you peace, all to bring you and those you love home, said Elder Patrick Kieran in April of 2024. With that in mind, the remnant which is scattered abroad upon the face of the earth should be gathered in. Who is the remnant that the Father has covenanted to bring back? Where is that remnant hiding? Is someone you love the remnant? If so, what does the Father's covenant mean to you? Are you, or have you ever been, the remnant? And what has the Father's covenant meant to you? With these questions, I invite you to read the rest of this section, which includes chapters from Isaiah and Malachi, ideas about the Lord gathering his people, what does that gathering mean literally? What does it mean spiritually? What does it mean personally for you? I invite you to think of those things, and if you have a good thought you'd like to share, I'd love it if you'd post it on the, on the Loom document so that the rest of us can take a look and be edified by what you're thinking. Thanks, everybody. Have a great fall break. Goodbye.